breaking news on Deer Island. New information just in about the remains of a young girl found there. News Center 5's John Atwater, live at the scene. In the afternoon of June 25, 2015, a bag washed ashore on Deer Island near Boston's Logan Airport. A woman discovered the remains of a child. The body had already decayed so much, it was impossible to visually identify the girl, and she became known as Baby Doe. You immediately think, what happened to this little girl? What type of life did she have? Was she sick? Did someone harm her? And if someone harmed her, what type of monster would harm an innocent child? Investigators would spend months trying to answer the question that plagued the nation. Who was this baby doe? We believe that our best chance of identifying this little girl will come from someone who knew her. This little girl should be enjoying the innocent childhood pursuits of summer. And in a few weeks, perhaps preparing to start school. Perhaps the first day of school ever in her life. Kathy Curran, an investigative reporter, extensively covered the story of Baby Doe for Boston news station WCVB. Late in the afternoon, we had received some information that what appeared to be human remains in a plastic bag had washed up on Deer Island in Winthrop. And I immediately began reaching out to some of my sources and eventually received the heartbreaking information that it was the body of a little girl. It wasn't long before more information came in about the remains that had washed ashore. By that evening, we learned that it was a woman who was just out walking her dog on a nice summer day along the water, and she made this gruesome discovery. I seen two legs come out folding. They just came out like that. I looked away, thinking that it wasn't real. We had no idea who this little girl was. We learned that she had brown hair and brown eyes, and she was wearing polka dot leggings. And there was a blanket in the bag with her that had a zebra print. But what was truly baffling was that for months, no one came forward to identify this little girl. We know that for whatever reason, you have not come forward yet. But surely you know the right thing to do. Examine your conscience and look into your heart and do the right thing. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children came up with a forensic reconstruction and her photo was plastered all over mainstream media, social media. There were flyers up everywhere in Boston and beyond. And there were even billboards up. So you would see the face of this little girl. No child should die nameless. And I just want people to understand that you know, this little girl was somebody. I think all of us are trying to find some solace. This child didn't, you know, die without family or anyone. She's the child in, of all of us. There's a fear that without the information put forward, it may somehow render the case cold. Investigators received hundreds of tips and leads, and they were chasing down those leads across Massachusetts, across the country, overseas. And once Michael Sprinsky came forward to police and said what he knew about this little girl who was killed, that was really the turning point. Michael Sprinsky, a South Boston native who hadn't yet heard of Baby Doe, would become a key witness in the case. He tipped off investigators to some crucial evidence after speaking with his sister, Laura Sprinsky. Once police received that information, that led to a search warrant being executed at the home of Rochelle Bond and her boyfriend, Michael McCarthy, in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Rochelle Bond and Michael McCarthy knew Sprinsky, and the men had been friends growing up. Sprinsky said that Bond had confided in him that McCarthy killed her daughter, and once Sprinsky told investigators, the case blew wide open. Based on interviews and evidence recovered pursuant to multiple search warrants executed during the past 24 hours, the child that we all came to know as Baby Doe has been identified as Bella Neva Amoroso Bond. Once word began to circulate that this was in fact Bella, it was that defining moment in September where we had a name to go along with the face of this little girl and 
you begin learning some of the horrific details in this case that Bella was punched so hard that it killed her and that her body was stored in a refrigerator in the home before being put in a plastic bag and then dumped in Boston Harbor. Prosecutors said that McCarthy had initially dumped Bella's body near the Edison power plant in South Boston, a spot where McCarthy and Sprinsky hung out as teenagers. When you heard this is where her body was dumped, what went through your mind? Shock and disgust. The way that that was done is unimaginable and they deserve every bad thing that's coming to them. Put her in a refrigerator and then toss her out like she's trash? How am I not supposed to be angry at that? One neighbor had recalled seeing toys being thrown away and had questioned Rochelle about that, but it definitely shocked that neighborhood. A memorial grows tonight outside the apartment where Bella lived and died. The mood here on Maxwell Street, a mixture of sadness and disbelief that no one here realized Baby Doe was the girl next door. I watched it practically every day. I'm waiting for them to find out who the child was. Never even thought. I didn't see her since summer. That's why I was asked, want to ask the mother, like where her dad was. It's not my business to ask her. We also learned a lot about the history of Bella and that her mom and her dad met when they were homeless. Her mom, Rochelle Bond, had a history of substance abuse. She had been arrested for prostitution. She tried to be responsible, but she was on drugs. Like, she would be kind of out of it. She'd talk slurred, and she would always have her daughter inside. She'd come out and smoke a cigarette. Her daughter would be crying. Bella's father never even met her, but he had conversations with Bella as a little girl over the phone. My biggest regret is not coming here soon, sooner. Just leave everything behind and just come here for my daughter. He told police that when he came to Massachusetts, he wanted to see Bella. And when he asked Rochelle Bond where she was, that Rochelle Bond told him that the Department of Children and Families had taken her. I knew something was going on and something wasn't right. I didn't feel like Bella was in a safe environment. I wanted her out of it. Rochelle Bond had already had her parental rights terminated for two other children 10 years before Bella was born. In 2013, the Department of Children and Families prematurely closed its neglect case regarding Bella. When all of the state supports naturally sort of ended, that she was not able to handle the stresses of her life and then reverted to the situation that ultimately led to Bella's death. It is clear that the Department of Children and Families should have not closed the case in 2013. A lot of people dropped the ball, absolutely. The couple was arrested and charged in connection with Bella's death. McCarthy was charged with murder, while Bond was charged with accessory to the crime and larceny for accepting over $1,000 in welfare after her daughter was killed. Bella's mother, Rachel D. Bond, age 40, has been placed under arrest as an accessory after the fact to murder. Based on the facts and the evidence developed thus far, which are consistent with the medical examiner's findings, we allege that McCarthy caused Bella's death, that he did so intentionally, that he and Bond took specific steps to keep Bella's death a secret and to avoid prosecution. As the trial date neared, new details emerged about Bella's life leading up to her death. Prosecutors say this is where the life of Bella Bond ended, on top of a twin mattress adorned with a Hello Kitty pillow. It is our first look inside the disheveled Dorchester apartment where the toddler lived with her mother, Rochelle Bond, and Michael McCarthy, her accused killer. Bond agreed to testify that McCarthy killed her daughter as part of a plea deal. She also said that he threatened to kill her if she told anyone about the murder. His case seems to rest on the fact that only two people really know what happened to this baby. One of them has now gotten a plea deal. I think the prosecutors in this case had to take this gamble. You know, often women, in, in her instance, she said she was a victim of domestic violence, that she was threatened if she disclosed the murder. So it is truly an issue of credibility. And who will the jury believe? I was scared. What were you scared of? Yeah. When Bond took the stand, she gave an emotional account of what she said happened to her daughter. I said no, she was, it was her time to die. She was a demon. He had punched her in the stomach. Where was she? Laying in the bed. I saw my green 
down back and we can see her thigh through it. Like, it was her in there. McCarthy was found guilty of second degree murder and sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 15 years. Bond was released from prison after the trial and was given two years probation. It was clear to us that Rochelle Bond loved the little girl, but at the same time, she also let that little girl down terribly. There's not gonna be a dangerous man on the street being able to hurt another child. Justice for Bella, finally justice for Bella. Such a beautiful little baby, she was well behaved. She just loved life. Come on, come on. Bella, come on, let's go look. You wanna see it? Come on. Come on, monkey. Monkey, look, look at the tail, monkey, look at it. As a journalist, you have so many of these cases that pull at your heartstrings, and I'm a parent, and any time there's a crime or if there's the death of a child, it's always just so heartbreaking because you think, who would want to harm an innocent child? You just pray for justice and for peace, you know, for their families. I'm Aaron Burrell. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Stitch for new episodes of Dispatches from the Middle and more.